Module 3, Lesson 13, Homework. Number 1. Are the following expressions greater than or less than 1? Circle the correct answer. So we're just estimating here. We don't want to actually solve. We want to decide if 1 half plus 4 ninths is going to be greater than 1 or if it's going to be less than 1. So I know that 1 half, that's a half, plus 4 ninths. So I'm going to look at 4 ninths and decide is 4 ninths less than 1 half or greater than 1 half? Because if I had 1 half plus 1 half, that would equal 1. So I already have the half. So is 4 ninths less than a half or greater than a half? Well, 4 ninths is less than a half. So if I'm adding a half plus something less than a half, I'm going to get less than 1. B, 5 eighths plus 3 fifths. So 5 eighths, that is greater than a half. And 3 fifths is also greater than a half. So if I'm adding something greater than a half plus something else that's bigger than a half, I'm going to get something greater than 1. 1 and 1 fifth minus 1 third. So 1 fifth, let's compare 1 fifth and 1 third. So 1 third and 1 fifth, 1 fifth is less than 1 third. So if I take 1 and 1 fifth and I subtract a third, I'm going to get something less than 1. D, 4 and 3 fifths minus 3 and 3 fourths. So I'm just going to go ahead and subtract the 4 minus 3. So I'll make it 1 and 3 fifths minus 3 fourths. Now let's compare 3 fifths and 3 fourths. 3 fifths is less than 3 fourths, so that's going to bring us some under 1. So this should be less than 1. So number 2, are the following expressions greater than or less than 1 half? Circle the correct answer. So this is similar to what we just did, but instead of comparing them to 1, we're comparing them to 1 half. So 1 fifth plus 1 fourth. So 1 fourth, that is half of 1 half, right? Because 1 fourth plus 1 fourth equals 1 half. So is 1 fifth greater than or less than 1 fourth? Well, 1 fifth is less than 1 fourth. So if I add 1 fifth and 1 fourth, I'm going to get something that is less than a half. B, 6 sevenths minus 1 sixth. So 6 sevenths, that's pretty close to 1 because it's almost 7 sevenths. If I subtract just 1 sixth, I think what I'm going to have is still going to be greater than 1 half. 1 and 1 seventh minus 5 six. So 1 and 1 seventh, that's really close to 1. And 5 six is also pretty close to 1. So I'm thinking if I subtract these, then I'm going to definitely get something that is less than 1 half. 4 sevenths plus 1 eighth. So 4 sevenths is very close to 1 half. So if I add just a little bit more on, I think I'm going to get something that would be greater than 1 half. Number 3. Use greater than, less than, or equal to to make the following statements true. 5 and 4 fifths plus 2 and 2 thirds. It's greater than, less than, or equal to 8 and 3 fourths. So we would have, I'm going to add the whole number, 7 and 4 fifths plus two-thirds. Um, so if I add, well, first of all, if I'm looking at, I have seven and four-fifths, and then I have two-thirds. That's comparing eight plus three-fourths. Well, seven and four-fifths is already smaller than eight, and two-thirds is also smaller than three-fourths, so this is going to be less than. B, three and four-sevenths minus two and three-fifths so I'm just going to go ahead and subtract first. So we have 1 and 4 sevenths minus 3 fifths. And then we'll have 1 and 4 sevenths plus 3 fifths. So here we're subtracting 3 fifths. We, have, we start with the same thing, 1 and 4 sevenths. And here we're adding 3 fifths. So this one is going to be less than because we're taking off, whereas the other one we're adding the 3 fifths. C, 4 and a half plus 1 and 4 ninths. So I'm going to combine the whole numbers and make it 5 and a half plus 4 ninths. And we're comparing that to 5 plus 
13 18 so here we already have five and a half is greater than five and 13 18 is greater than 4 9 but we're adding the 4 9 onto something that was already bigger than the 5. So if I was estimating, I would say that this is going to be greater than 5 plus 13 18 And D, 10 and 3 8 minus 7 and 3 5 So I'll combine 10 minus 7 is 3 and 3 8 minus 3 5 compared to 3 and 3 8 plus 3 fifths. So this is similar to this one up here. So here we're subtracting. We start with the same numbers. We're subtracting versus adding. So this one is going to be less than. Number 4. Is it true that 5 and 2 thirds minus 3 and 3 fourths equals 1 plus 2 thirds plus 3 fourths? Prove your answer. So I'm going to subtract 5 minus 3, so I'll get 2 and 2 thirds minus 3 fourths. And then I'll make that 1 and 2 thirds plus 3 fourths. I'm going to make a number line here. And I'll make it from 0 to 3. So if I have 2 and 2 thirds right there, and I'm going to subtract 3 fourths, then I'm going to need to make that into twelfths in order to actually subtract. So I have it broken into thirds. So there it is into twelfths. And now if I'm, so this would be eight twelfths. And I'm going to subtract three fourths, which is equal to nine twelfths. So if I subtract nine twelfths, I'll end up right here, which is one and eleven twelfths. So that would be the answer for this part, 1 and 11 twelfths. And then the other part, 1 and 2 thirds. So if I start over here at 1 and 2 thirds, which is 1 and 8 twelfths, and then I add 3 fourths, which we know is 9 twelfths, I'm going to cross that. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 twelfths would be all the way over here. So they're not equal to the same thing. So we would say no, not equal. And there are many different ways to prove this, not just a number line, other ways. Number five, a tree limb hangs five and one fourth feet from a telephone wire. The city trims back the branch before it grows within, notice how it before is in italics, it grows within two and a half feet of the wire. Will the city allow the tree to grow two and three feet, two and three fourths feet more? So let's kind of draw a picture. There's my tree. And it has a, there's a wire, so let's pretend that's like an electrical wire. And there's a branch hanging, so there's my artistic skills. There's a branch hanging from the tree and the city trims it back before it grows within two and a half feet. Right now, it's hanging five and one fourth feet. So right now, it is five and one fourth feet from the wire. The city trims it before it grows within two and a half feet. So it cannot get this close. They'll trim it before it gets two and a half feet within the wire. So will it be allowed to grow two and three fourths more feet? That's what we need to know. We want to know how much space is left in this area right here. So what we can do to figure that out is do five and one fourth minus two and one half. 
So I'm going to find a common denominator. My common denominator for 4 and 2 is 4. So I can leave 5 and 1 fourth alone, but I need to change 2 and a half into fourths. 2 times 2 is 4, so I'll have 5 and 1 fourth minus 2 and 2 fourths. I can't do that because I need to regroup. So I'm going to make this 4 and 5 fourths minus 2 and 2 fourths. 4 minus 2 is 2. 5 fourths minus 2 fourths is 2 and 3 fourths. Now at first glance, you would say yes, that it can grow 2 and 3 fourths feet more. However, it, they're going to trim it back before it grows within two and a half feet, which means it can't grow two and three fourths feet more because it will have already been trimmed. So the answer is actually no, it can't grow two and three fourths feet more because it will have been trimmed by then. Number six, Mr. Kreider wants to paint two doors and several shutters. It takes two and one eighth gallons of paint to coat each door and one and three fifths gallons of paint to coat all the shutters. If Mr. Kreider buys two, three two gallons of paint, cans of paint, does he have enough to complete the job? So let's break this down a little bit. So he wants to paint two doors. It takes two and one eighth gallon for each door. So for the doors, we're gonna have two and one, two groups of two and one eighth. So two and one eighth gallons for each door. And the shutters, it takes one and three fifths gallons to coat all the shutters. So one and three fifths for all the shutters. And he buys three two gallon can cans of paint. So three two gallon cans of paint. He has six gallons. Does he have enough to complete the job? Well, let's add everything together and see if he does. So two and one eighth plus two and one eighth. I'm just gonna go ahead and add those together. That's four and two eighths plus one and three fifths. We need to find a common denominator for eight and five. Still don't see one. And there it is, 40. So four and two eighths, we need to make that into fortieths. So eight times five is 40. Plus one and three fifths, we need to make into fortieths. So times eight eighths will give us fortieths. We're gonna have four and 10 fortieths plus one and three times eight is 24 fortieths. So we'll get five and 34 fortieths is how much he needs. He has six gallons, so yes, he has enough.